In this Q&A video, I'm going to be asking the question, where do we need to use double pole protective devices? And we're going to illustrate the points using some of these products from Luden Palazzoli. And to make sure you don't get caught out when replacing a consumer unit, check out our free training package on the subject by clicking on the link in the description below. Hi, I'm James Kerno, and to find the answer to this question, I'm going to be looking in BS7671, and there are a few chapters to look at to find the answer. Now, there are some specific installations that require double pole protective devices, and they are in part seven special locations, and they are as follows. The first example is marinas and similar locations. Regulation 709.531.2 says that socket outlets shall be protected individually by an RCD having the characteristics specified in 415.1.1. Devices selected shall disconnect all poles, including the neutral. Also, Final circuits intended for fixed connection for the supply of house spokes shall be protected individually by RCD having the characteristics specified in 415.1.1. Devices selected shall disconnect all poles, including the neutral. The next example is solar photovoltaic PV supply systems. Regulation 712.432.101 says that where overcurrent protective devices are required on the DC side, both polarities shall be protected. In outdoor lighting installations, regulation 714.537.2.1.1 states that every circuit shall be capable of being isolated individually from each of the live supply conductors, except as detailed in regulation 461.2. Now I'll talk about this regulation a little bit later in the video. In caravans, regulation 721.415.1 states that where protection by automatic disconnection of supply is used, an RCD with a rated operating current not exceeding 30 milliamps, breaking all live conductors shall be provided, having the characteristics specified in 415.1.1. Also, regulation 721.43.1 states that each final circuit shall be protected by an overcurrent protective device, which disconnects all live conductors of that circuit. The next example is electric vehicles. Joe Robinson has previously made a video about double pole RCBOs for EV chargers. So if you haven't seen that video already, please watch that video after this one. Next, we come to onshore units of electrical shore connections for inland navigational vessels. Regulation 730.531.3 says that socket outlets with a rated current not exceeding 63 amps shall be individually protected by an RCD providing additional protection in accordance with regulation 415.1, having a rated current not exceeding 30 milliamps. The RCD selected shall disconnect all live conductors, i.e. line and neutral. Note that this relates to the shore supply rather than any onboard circuits, which are outside of the scope of BS7671. The next example in part seven is temporary electrical installations for structures, amusement devices, and booths at fairgrounds, amusement parks, and circuses. Regulation 740.537.2.2 says that a device for isolation shall disconnect all live conductors, brackets, line and neutral conductors. As I mentioned in a previous video here on the eFix channel, if you're working in an environment that is a special location in BS7671, I recommend checking part seven for any specific requirements. The next chapter that relates to this question is chapter 46, isolation and switching. Regulation 461.2 states that in TNCS and TNS systems, isolation or switching of the neutral conductor is not required if protective equipotential bonding is installed and either one, the neutral is connected to earth by a low resistance to meet the disconnection times of the protected device according to the requirements of chapter 41, or the distributor declares that either the pen or neutral conductor of the supply is reliably connected to earth by a low resistance to meet the disconnection times of the protected devices according to the requirements of chapter 41. However, if we look at regulation 462.2, it says that every circuit shall be provided with isolation means for all live conductors except as detailed in regulation 461.2, which is the regulation I mentioned a moment ago. And that regulation relates to TNCS and TNS systems. So in other words, if the system is a TT or an IT system, we would need to be providing switching for all live conductors. And when we say live conductors, that includes the neutral, which is also defined as a live part if we look in part two definitions. So in a TT system, if we intend on using the protected device for isolation, we need to provide double pole protected devices. 
However, Regulation 462.2 also says that provision may be made for a group of circuits by common means, if the service condition allows this. Now, what this means is we can use the double pole main switch as the means of isolation. However, we need to bear in mind that if any of the protected devices are intended to be used as a means of isolation, then we would need to use a double pole protected device. So to give an example, if we look at table 534.7, which is on page 184 of BSM671, the table lists types of protective and switching devices and shows which devices are suitable for isolation. And this shows that MCBs and RCBOs are suitable for isolation. However, note four refers to regulation 462.2, which says that every circuit shall be provided with isolation means for all live conductors, except as detailed in regulation 461.2. So to summarize, if you're working on a TT system and if the protected devices are intended to be used as a means of isolating circuits individually, then double pole protected devices will be required. I also mentioned IT systems. Now, if you're wondering what I mean by IT system, an IT system is a system which is insulated from Earth via a sufficiently high impedance. IT systems are used in situations where a more resilient power supply is needed, especially if loss of power would be dangerous. And the most obvious example would be an operating theater and other group two medical locations listed in section 710. Now, where we talk about double pole protected devices, that obviously relates to single phase circuits, but there are also requirements for protecting the neutral that relate to three phase circuits. So for that, there are four pole protected devices for situations where we need to protect the neutral conductor as well as the line conductors. For more information on this topic, please also see the previous video that I mentioned earlier. Chapter 43 in BS 761 m provides requirements for the protection of live conductors from the effect of overcurrent, and Regulation 431.2 relates to protection of the neutral conductor. Regulation 431.2.1 relates to TN or TT systems and says that the neutral conductor shall be protected against short circuit current. Where the cross-sectional area of the neutral conductor is at least equivalent to that of the line conductors, and the current is not expected to exceed the value in the line conductors, it's not necessary to provide detection for the neutral conductor or a disconnecting device for that conductor. However, if we turn the page, the regulation continues, where the cross-sectional area of the neutral conductor is less than that of the line conductors, it is necessary to provide overcurrent detection for the neutral conductor, appropriate to the cross-sectional area of the conductor. So a reduced size neutral is an example of where we would need to provide protection to the neutral conductor. This would apply to three phase installations. So if you have ever wondered whether you should use a three pole or a four pole protected device in a three phase four wire system, a reduced size neutral would be one possible reason for using a four pole device to make sure that the neutral is protected against short circuit. The next regulation is 431.2.2, which relates to IT systems and says, the neutral conductor should not be distributed unless one of the following is met. First, overcurrent detection is provided for the neutral conductor of every circuit. The overcurrent detection shall cause the disconnection of all the live conductors of the corresponding circuit, including the neutral. Second, the particular neutral is effectively protected against short circuit by a protected device on the supply side. Third, the particular circuit is protected by an RCD with a rated residual operating current, I delta N, not exceeding the current carrying capacity of the corresponding neutral conductor. So an IT system is another example of where we would need to consider protecting the neutral conductor. However, in regulation 411.6.1, there is a note that says that it is strongly recommended that IT systems with distributed neutrals should not be employed. The next regulation is 431.2.3, which relates to harmonic currents. Again, this relates to three phase systems and the regulation says that overcurrent detection shall be provided for the neutral conductor in a polyphase circuit where the harmonic content of the line conductors is such that the current in the neutral may exceed the current carrying capacity of that conductor. So in summary, there are various examples of where we need to consider double pole protection for single phase circuits and four pole protection devices for three phase circuits. If you haven't seen Joe's previous video on double pole RCDs for EV chargers, please see that video after this one. Thanks for watching.